Uh, Navy training in Australia. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's the last place I would be in the goddamn Navy is Australia. Oh, my God. What do you have to do to become a Navy SEAL in Australia? You have to stab a great white shark to death? All right. Hey, Bill, just watched at voice clip. I think that voice clip of you on YouTube about how you watched the two weeks in hell thing. I was in the Australian Navy and it was similar, but you got for not keeping your own. I don't know what that means. Preface. This was before the media cared about all genders. We had Big Bertha, which on the second day of recruit school, we were kept up until 2 a.m. and were only allowed a breakfast bar the night before. They woke us up by smashing trash cans in each of our dorms. Right there, I'd be out. I'd be out. Uh, they'd be like, good, you're too weak. And I'd be like, you're right. I'm going to a holiday and I want to thank all of you for protecting me in my eight hours sleep. All right. Then we had to run downstairs and carry the rope called Big Bertha, which was the equivalent, oh my God, of the old ship's anchor lines. And we ran for about six kilometers, 3.7 miles. What the fuck? Until we were allowed to have food. After that, anyone that couldn't continue, we were partnered up with and had to carry them and Big Bertha shaming the people that couldn't continue. Uh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. Dude, were they up on the rope weeping? Did they literally get broken that bad? And we event- when, when we eventually got back to base, we were allowed breakfast and then had to go on with the eight-hour drills and fulfill our duty watches. Wow, dude, that is some psychological breakdown right there. Holy shit. The most fucked up thing about all of this. Hey, wait, dude, did you make it through all of this? Oh, my God. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to be me? Has your girlfriend ever said that to you when you're thinking about that big Bertha march? Um, was this... Okay, this was in um, 0203 and the Australian Defense Force... Our military, God forbid we seem aggressive, oh, you say defense force, had instituted a policy where females could only be treated or ordered for so many hours a day. So handing AVs dash gas, helicopter fuel, so handling, okay, helicopter fuel was only be performed by men because it caused impotence in women, but also men. But females could hold positions on the, yeah, but they can also make a baby and they know anybody will fuck them. So your dick and your balls are ex- expendable at that point. That's simple math. But females could hold positions on the, the Hilo refuel team. Well, that doesn't make sense. But when it came to actually handling fuel, they get volunteer males to do it. After dealing with shit like being blamed because my ship couldn't get any new workers from land because the ship was a fucking grinder and being in charge of people when I haven't even been promoted, I decided to just start drinking so much I got kicked off and it was my best decision ever. This is like a great movie. Spent my last year of my contract at a base in a rich part of Sydney, Australia, surfing in the morning and banging a few of the new female sailors that all over 21, he puts in parentheses, that had never been to sea. My proudest moment was when I was awarded the Humanitarian Aid Medal because I build hospitals in Sumatra after the 05 tsunami. I spent days helping and building, and the people of Sumatra were some of the most thankful and kindest people I ever met. What a fucking great story that is. Oh, my God, can you imagine if you quit? Like, how tired you'd have to be, how excruciatingly tired you'd have to be to climb up on that rope and be carried back 3.7 miles I just have to go mentally with every step. This humiliation is one step closer to being over. What do you say when you get off? Good day, mate. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm a fucking... Oh, my God. I can't imagine what people said to you on the way back. Overrated, underrated. All right. Overrated. New York and Los Angeles. I've lived in both cities for over four years each. I love them, but I've also lived on a creek in Virginia and a farm in Vermont. 
Unless you need to be in one of those cities, just don't go there. I, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. You should visit them. Uh, underrated. Wayne's World. I never heard you talk about this movie. You should definitely rewatch this next time you take a hit, man. All right, I'll check it out. I will definitely check it out. Um, I had an overrated, underrated. Okay, I, I, you know what? Overrated. These new fucking elevators. Where I got to fucking hit like 20 goddamn buttons to let the elevator know that I'm going to floor four so it can fucking compartmentalize all the people there when I'm the only fucking person there. You know? And I got to take my key out and fucking run it over the scanner. I like the old school ones. We just got in, you push the button. First fucking 10 years I was on the road. That was that was the way it was. And I never had that guy from No Country from Old Men blow out the lock on my door you know it was completely fine i remember one time i stayed in a bed and breakfast in fucking colorado with this dude from germany it was so fucking creepy because he was walking the halls at night and i was just sitting there and the hall light would be on and i was looking at the light and i didn't have a lock on. did i? I think maybe i had a skeleton key and i was just sitting there oh wow i just remember my luggage i had this ugly ass green like made out of cloth bag, cloth and plastic that this guy puked on one time. Oh my God, remember that? Jesus Christ, I've been through a lot of shit, people. <laughs> All right, let's tell the German one first. So I'm fucking, oh, we'll tell the puke one. No, you got to close with the puke. I've already told that story and it's so fucking gross. I've been puked on twice in my life. Once on my head, you know, everybody in my family had gotten sick and we had this bathroom. It was a half a bathroom with no door. You were around the corner. No privacy whatsoever. We lived in a duplex. The squirrels got into the walls. I had to f- scare them out and then my dad would kill them, you know. It was the 70s, 80s, you know, shit like that happened. So um, there was no place to, you couldn't, I couldn't make a Facebook video and shame my landlord, you know, or my dad couldn't do that, you know, so he just, he had to kill the fuckers. I remember I had a broom and I was fucking shaking it, trying to get the thing to come out. And my dad was on the other side, he had this giant fucking butcher knife or a metal bar or something, I can't remember. And it was a metal bar, that's what it was, like a big piece of lead or something. And he flushed that thing out, and that fucking thing came running up the broom, up the broom handle. I remember its eyes were wide as shit. Its tail was straight up in the end. This little brown cutie pie fucking ran up my arm and launched off of my shoulder. And I went, ah! And then it ran into the half of bathroom. And there was one way in and only one way out. My dad was in the way, and he fucking brought that lead thing down right on in the back of its fucking neck. And just slowly killed the thing. And I watched him do it. Um, so anyways, one time we were all fucking sick. And I was in there finishing puking in the bathroom with no door. My brother came running in. And just ran. And rather than puking in the fucking sink that was readily available. You know, we were young. So it was just like you puke in the toilet. And my head was obstructing the toilet and it was like where how low pressure goes to high pressure it takes the most direct route which is right through the airfoil and that's how you get lift when you fly he used those same principles when puking into the toilet <laughs> and my head was the airfoil and every fucking puked on my head and i just freaked out and i was punching him as hard as i could in the stomach as he was continuing to puke my parents came in they were laughing their ass off at me and the kitchen sink was there, and she just fucking dunked my head in there and fucking washed it. That was so gross. So gross. So then the second time I got puked on, I was trying to save money, and I was taking a bus from Manhattan to LaGuardia Airport. And we were almost at my terminal. I'd taken the subway up to Harlem and then took the bus over the bridge. And this dude just got up looking all gray, and he fucking projectile vomited and he hit this sweet old lady in front of me on her chest and 
it was like the Kennedy assassination where the spray just went back, except it didn't go to the left. It went to the right where I was sitting. And it, it got on my foot, my sock, and my lower pants, and all over my luggage. And then he just stumbled off the bus. And I was like, you motherfucker. And I wanted to beat the shit out of him. But I was broke, and I needed the money, and I had to go to my gig. I just glared at him. That's all I could do. And then I had to go in there, got off the bus, and now people look at me like I'm an animal because I smelt like fucking puke. And I went into the bathroom, like beyond Tourette's, took the sock off, the shoe off, fucking, but I only had one pair of footwear, so I threw out the sock. It's disgusting. I had to wash off my fucking pant leg the best I could. My sneaker was soaking fucking wet. I had one sock on, one sock off, walking in a squishy, wet fucking sneaker. And my fucking green cloth bag, I had wiped off all of the puke, but it was like stained and it had like the little fucking paper towel balls on it. It was so fucking gross. It was so fucking gross. And I then had to get on like a fucking flight to like Minnesota just sitting there smelling of stomach acid and I I got off the plane and I immediately went to a mall and I bought some sweatpants and the cheapest fucking sneakers and socks and I just fucking threw the shit out and I bought a bag but I didn't have time to do that before I went to the mall oh my god that was a fucking terrible trip what a fucking terrible trip that was um (laughs) 